What's going on YouTube? I'm Slick, that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the side, you've come to the right place. I've said it before on this channel, but I just love Warhammer 40k. My army of choice is the Death Guard, man. They got guts hanging out of their bellies, mouths on their stomach, they look all nasty and stuff, I just think they're really cool. Not to mention, I'm a sucker for some good world building, man, and can I just say, Warhammer builds its worlds real good. Now, I don't buy a lot of models these days, money being as tight as it is and well i don't really like games workshop anyways they ain't getting the sand out of me but i like to get myself a squad here and a tank there off of ebay when i can if you've been in the scene you'd know that from time to time games workshop gets political i remember back when the black lives matter protests were being spurred on by the killing of george floyd they were among the companies that got on the soapbox to virtue signal about it i don't like it when companies do this kind of stuff no siree not even because of any personal sentiment or political beliefs of my own it's just that I want to consume your product and go on with my day. I don't need no CEO or PR team to preach to me about diversity this and safe gaming experiences that. Fooey to it. Your company makes glorified toys. Don't pretend you're a major player in the political scene. But well, I'm getting off topic, ain't I? Games Workshop recently released this here article on their site, but I think before we really read into it, we need to go into why people are saying they wrote it. About three weeks ago, there was a Warhammer tournament held in Spain. Apparently, the Warhammer scene is really big over there for some reason. No idea why. According to this blog, which funnily enough, seems to have been deleted and was written by someone who's probably better off in the loony bin because the way this blog post was written, I'm like 90% sure this guy's unhinged, but whatever. It details how someone wore a jacket with what looks to be hate symbols on it and went under the player name Austrian Painter. The reference of course is very obvious. We're still the organizers of the event didn't disqualify him or ban him from the tournament despite many complaints by tournament participants, which is unjustifiable. This is inappropriate clothing to wear just about anywhere, much less to a tabletop wargaming event. And still, those who initially complained about his apparel refused to play against him and were penalized with point loss. Again, this was the wrong way to handle a situation which, by all means, should have been very straightforward. These people should have been asked to leave or at least change their clothes. There's no excuse here. So, there's the context. The rest of this blog post, again, it's really bad. I don't recommend giving it a read because it's obvious the guy who wrote it is an insufferable soy drinking loser. With that context in mind, we can now read the article that spawned from all this hullabaloo. The Imperium is driven by hate. Warhammer is not. There are no goodies in the Warhammer 40k universe. None, especially not the Imperium of Man. Its numberless legions of soldiers and zealots bludgeon their way across the galaxy, delivering death to anyone and anything that doesn't adhere to their blinkered view of purity. Almost every man and woman toils in misery, either on the battlefield, where survival is measured in hours, or in the countless manufactorums and hive slums that fuel the Imperial war machine. All of this in slavish servitude to the living corpse of God Emperor, whose commandments are, at best, only half remembered, twisted by time and the fallibility of humanity. Warhammer 40k isn't just grimdark, it's the grimmest darkest. Well, that just kind of reiterates what we already know. The point of Warhammer isn't that, you know, you're the good guy, you no know, fighting against an unjust galaxy or whatever. The point of Warhammer is that no matter what, you're the bad guy. And, well, that's what people like about it. Being the bad guy's fun. You know, people like being evil every now and then. The Imperium of Man stands as a cautionary tale of what could happen should the very worst of humanity's lust for power and extreme, unyielding xenophobia set in. Like so many aspects of Warhammer 40k, the Imperium of Man is satirical. For clarity, satire is the use of humor, irony, or exaggeration, displaying people's vices or a system's flaws for scorn, derision, and ridicule. Something doesn't have to be wacky or laugh out loud funny to be satire. The derision is in the setting amplification of a tyrannical genocidal regime turned up to 11. The Imperium is not an aspirational state outside of the in-universe perspectives of those who are slaves to its systems. It's a monstrous civilization and its monstrousness is plain for all to see. And this, this is something that I just kinda, you know, I don't really see it. What they're trying to say here is that the Imperium of Man serves as some sort of social commentary. I just don't see it. I think, at the very most, it takes aspects from ideologies and the like, from this era, exaggerates it, and puts it into their game. That really ain't commentary though, that's just taking inspiration for content. And here's the thing though, let's say that the Imperium of Man is supposed to be satirical, meant to showcase humanity's flaws or whatever. 
Well, if that's the case, Games Workshop has done a horrible job at showing it, considering that the Imperium of Man is consistently showcased as being heroic, righteous, and inspirational in Games Workshop's own material and advertisements. All of this is really just to say that I don't think the Imperium of Man was meant to be a social commentary or nothing. It's obvious to me that Games Workshop's just trying to make this sound deeper than what it really is. I think the fact that Warhammer is over-exaggerated and over-the-top is less about saying something and more about making a selling point, a reason for people to buy up them miniatures. In the same vein that you can't have your cake and eat it too, you can't say that you're trying to showcase humanity at its worst while also using humanity quote at its worst to push your game. It just don't work. That being said, certain real-world hate groups and adherence to historical ideologies better left in the past sometimes seek to claim intellectual properties for their own enjoyment and co-opt them for their own agendas. Probably making a pass to the Spanish player we read about earlier. And you know, I don't necessarily doubt that this kind of stuff happens, the whole deal with hate groups appropriating and infiltrating tabletop game communities. Thing is, I just never see it happen. Or at least, not on the scale that I'm led to believe it's happening on. I read articles and watch videos talking about how Warhammer has some sort of Nazi problem. I hear about it all the time. Thing is, I, I, I never see it. I've never seen this so-called infiltration, never seen no Nazi, no game store, never. The only time I've ever really seen it is, well, with the Spanish player we talked about earlier. I just think it's a whole lot of fear-mongering, you know? We believe in and support a community united by shared values of mutual kindness and respect. Our fantasy settings are grim and dark, but that is not a reflection of who we are or how we feel the real world should be. We will never accept nor condone any form of prejudice, hatred, or abuse in our company or in the Warhammer hobby. Now there, was that so hard? Did you really have to go on that spiel about how the Imperium of Man is actually political commentary or some jarble? This is really all you had to say, man. Like, this whole article? Like, you didn't have to write that up. I don't know. If you come to a Games Workshop event or store and behave to the contrary, including wearing the symbols of real-world hate groups, you will be asked to leave. We won't let you participate. We don't want your money. We don't want you in the Warhammer community. Yeah, give it up for the multi-billion dollar corporation. So brave. So, yeah, don't get me wrong. I don't like Nazis, and I don't want none in my hobbies. That being said, this whole article is a joke. When it's not a pile of PR pudge. Huh, pile of PR pudge. That's a new one. I'll have to remember that one. When it's not a pile of PR pudgy pie, it misunderstands and misinterprets the Imperium of Man. How about that? Not only are big companies losing touch with their audiences, they're doing so with their own products. Sad, in it? All in all, I could care less if Games Workshop don't like Nazis. I mean, who does? Not liking Nazis is, well, that's the minimum for any human being. At the end of the day, Games Workshop are still anti-consumer dirtbags, seeing customers as nothing more than pay pigs, and stealing the talent of passionate fans to prop up their dying streaming service. It's gonna take more than PR drivel to get me on your side, but that's all I've got for this shtick. Nah, do old Jackie a favor and keep it groovy. Thank you. Thank you very much.